Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. This is lesson number 11 where we're going to learn to work with a servo motor. This is the first step on your path to eventually create your own terminator. What's a servo motor? A servo motor is a small motor. Usually it's blue, sometimes it's black. You can attach these little plastic pieces onto the top to allow you to attach different things to the motor. The motor allows you to have a range of motion of 180 degrees. So you can move 180 and 180 back the other way. And so kind of like running along the edge of a protractor. So that's the range of motion we get of a servo motor. It's not the same as a motor that you use to power the wheels on a car that move in one direction but can move all the way around. This allows us to go in both directions but only within that range. Okay, so we're going to learn how to use a servo motor in this lesson. Uh, we're also going to focus a little bit on class structure and code uh, in this lesson and learn about something called methods and ways that we can create our own blocks of code. So first things first, we need to do the wiring for this. Very, very simple wiring. You need to dig out your servo motor. Servo motors come with three wire attachments. Okay, you'll need to use some jumper wires to connect to the Arduino. There'll be a brown or a black wire that represents the ground. So we're going to connect that to one of the ground pins on our Arduino. And I'll just take a second and make the wiring look pretty. They also have a red pin, which is going to connect to our power or our 5 volt pin on our Arduino. So we'll go ahead and connect that pin to the 5 volt, and then we'll clean it up a bit. And the final pin is the pin that's actually going to be the signal pin that's going to connect to our Arduino. For this lesson, we're going to connect it to pin number 3, which you'll notice is a PWM pin, Okay, which is important that we have that. So let's set that pin to orange, and let's clean it up. So there we have our wiring diagram. Our servo motor is connected to the ground, to the voltage, and to pin number three. That's all the wiring we're going to do. The rest of this lesson we're going to spend looking at our code. So let's head over there now. Here we are in the code. We've got a blank file ready to go. Just naming it lesson 11, where we're going to learn to use our servo motor and work a little bit with method structure. So for our code, we're going to start above our setup function. The three things that we're going to include above our setup function are a library. We're going to include the servo.h library. You can do this in a number of ways. Like in the early lessons, we can go to the libraries tab and grab it through there. If you're in the actual Arduino IDE, you can do it up through the menus where you can go to include libraries and look for servo.h. Once we've included the library to work with the servo, we need to declare the pin on which our servo is plugged in. We plugged our servo into pin number three. So my integer servo pin is set equal to three. We then need to create a servo object, which is going to allow us to send commands to the motor. We do this using a capital S servo and then the name that we chose, which was servo one. You could give this a different name if you chose. I chose to call it servo one. So now that we have that, we're ready to jump into our setup function and make sure our code knows how to communicate with our Arduino. So in order to do that, we need to send an attach command to the servo motor that we just created. So we do servo1.attach. And then in the brackets, we need to tell it what pin we've plugged it into. So this line of code allows our Arduino software to communicate with the servo motor via that servo pin. We're also going to initialize our serial monitor as we may want to use it for user input and debugging. And I'll just add a few comments in for clarity. That's all the code that we need in our setup function. Now we're ready to jump into our loop function where we're actually going to do some stuff with our code. We're going to do a few things. We're going to print out some messages to the screen and ask the user for some input. We're going to use that to manipulate our servo motor. And then we're going to kind of up it a little bit and we're going to play around with a little bit more structure to our code. So to start it off, we're going to prompt the user for a number from 0 to 180. Then we're going to use that value to move or point the servo motor at that specific angle. So here's the code to get the user input value from the user. So this code is going to prompt the user using serial and ask for a position from 0 to 180. So we have a print line statement, enter a value from 0 to 180 to move the servo to that position. Then we have the while serial.available loop, so waiting for the response. And then we're storing what they give us in an integer called user val. And we're going to use the serial.parse int because we want that value to be read as an integer. So now we have a number that the user has given us. We now need to send the servo motor to that particular angle. So we can do a servo one dot write, which is going to tell the servo to point to a specific angle. What angle? Well, the user value. So the number that the user gave us is where we want to point the servo motor. 
And then we'll put a delay of some sort in before it prompts the user again. Okay, so this should ask the user for a value from zero to 180, point the servo motor at that value, and then wait one second. We're gonna push this code out and we'll have a quick look at how it works. So we'll hop over to the serial monitor here, set this to no line ending. So enter a value from zero to 180 to move the servo to that position. So I'm just gonna hold my servo up here so you can see it. So I'll start with zero and we'll see if it moves. Oh, there we go. And then we'll try 90, there it goes. And then we'll jump all the way over to 180. And there it goes again. So by sending that command, I get to move it to the position that I want. Okay, so that would be our first step with learning to work with the servo motor, is being able to get a value from the user and point the servo motor at that specific value. So that's what we've done so far. Now we're gonna take it a step further uh, and we're gonna actually start doing uh, methods. So methods are a block of code in which we can store code that we might want to use over and over again. So I'll give you an example. We've already been using two methods this whole time. The setup method and the loop method. So we're going to write our own method. I'm going to call this method control. So I'm outside of all of my code. Hit enter and I'm going to do void control, okay, brackets, and I'm going to take an integer called x and I open my squigglies. So this, I've created a method. The method's name is control, and in order for us to use the code in this method, we need to give it a number. If we give it a number, the code inside this method can run. Well, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take the code that we already have, this code here, the serial servo.write. So let's take this servo1.write code, I'm gonna get rid of it from the loop, and I'm gonna move it into here. What I'm going to do is instead of writing the user value, I'm going to write x. So what happens here? Okay, so in my loop function, I'm going to write control user value. So let's trace this code. When it gets to this line, it's already gotten the number from the user. It says call the control method, finds that, and give it the number that you just got from the user. So what this does is it jumps down to line 28 of my code and sets the value of x to whatever the value was here. Then it enters the method. Now inside the method, it can write that value to the servo. So this code is gonna function exactly the same as the code that we just ran. But now I've taken this and I've put it into its own block. Now I'm gonna write another method. We're gonna write a sweep method, void sweep. And this one's not gonna take any parameters. So it's just gonna be void sweep with the closed brackets, okay? Now in this method, we wanna kinda of treat our servo like a windshield wiper. So we're gonna start it at zero, sweep it all the way to 180, and then sweep it all the way back to zero. We're gonna to have to do that using for loops. So let's go through this quickly. For parentheses, integer i equals zero. This says create an integer called i, set it equal to a starting value of zero, semicolon. As long as i, is less than 180, we'll iterate i by one, which means we'll add one to i each time. So for loop has three parts, your variable and its starting value, your condition of success. So as long as i is less than 180, it will execute the code in the loop. And then your iterator, what happens after each execution? i goes up by one, okay? So inside of this, I wanna do a servo one.write i. Now that's going to set i to zero, or the servo to zero, then the servo to one, then the servo to two, and so on. Now it'll happen super fast if I don't have a delay in there. So we'll put a delay of five milliseconds, just so that it isn't so stuttery, trying to do it super fast. So that's going to sweep us from zero to 180. Now we want to sweep back in the other direction. So let's do that. Four int i equals 180. So we're going to start at the top this time i is greater than zero, i minus minus. So starting at 180, as long as we're bigger than zero, continue to take one off. Servo one dot right i delay five. And this code is going to sweep me from zero to 180. And this code is gonna sweep me back. We wanna use this method at some point. So right now we're asking the user to enter a position from zero to 180. And then we're just calling control. So we're just doing that right. Let's give them a second option. 
let's say that instead of that, they could give us, say, negative 1, and we'll do a sweep for them. Or enter negative 1 to sweep. Okay, enter a value from 0 to 180 to move the server to that position, or negative 1 to sweep. We'll collect their value right here. Before we do this, we need to add in what's called a conditional. And we've done this, an if statement. So if the value they gave us was negative 1, then we're going to call sweep. Otherwise, else if. Now this will get a little technical. I'll try to explain it after I type it out. So what I said here was otherwise, if user val is greater than or equal to 0, and it's less than or equal to 180. So it's in the right range, okay? And is done with two of the ampersand symbols. It's found above the seven key on your keyboard. Okay, great user value is greater than or equal to zero and it is less than or equal to 180. That's when we're gonna call the control. So this now gives the user two choices. They can choose to do the sweep or they can choose to just enter a value and it'll move the motor to that position. Okay, so now we've created our own methods, we're calling our own methods, and we're using a bit of structure around how our code works. We're starting to get things to look a little bit more like actual programs, where we now have to think about code structure, we have to think about how do we break this into logical chunks, and that's a big part of programming. Let's run this and have a look at how it executes. So we upload this to our thing and we open up the serial monitor. And I'll bring my servo up here so you can see it. Okay, so it asks me to enter my value. So I'm gonna start with that negative one and we're gonna see the sweep. So there it goes. Sweeps from one side to the other. Let's run that one more time so you can see it. Oh, like a windshield wiper. And then if I did wanna enter a value, say 45, it jumps to position 45. I can enter position 80 and it'll jump to position 80. Now if I enter something out of the range, so 400, it should just do nothing. Wait one second and prompt me again. Nothing happens and it prompts me again. Okay, so go to position 100, choop, and then let's do a sweep again. So it should jump back to zero and then sweep. There it goes. Cool. So we now have a working servo motor. We have code that has some actual structure to it. Uh, we learned how to write some methods, we've looked at some loops, we've looked at some if statements. Things are starting to kind of come together. You know, we're halfway through now. So over the next nine lessons, as we get to lesson 20, this kind of stuff is going to become more common, where we're looking at larger files, we're looking at chunking up code, using if statements, using loops within our code. Uh, if you made it this far, good for you. You either have a teacher standing over your shoulder making sure you get there, or you've got a bit more motivation than most people, so that's great. Uh, let's talk about what we could do for an extension for this. So a couple options. One would be look at your sweep method and let's see if we can change the speed of that sweep. That would be a first kind of intro extension for you to do. Another one would be instead of sweeping, maybe you can come up with another pattern that you could do with your servo motor and put that in your sweep method. Or write another method that does a different pattern, kind of bounce around the motor, can run a few times. Okay, and just kind of get familiar with how you manipulate things or how you create methods within this code because the code structure here is really important, not just the writing to the servo. Now, if you're looking for a challenge, I'm just going to show you some functionality uh, of some code and then we can kind of see if uh, you can reproduce that. My prompt is the same as it was in the lesson from 0 to 180 or enter negative 1 to sweep. Now, when I enter negative 1 to sweep, it's going to add in two prompts. It's going to ask me for the delay. So think about windshield wipers, right? There's something called the intermittent windshield wiper, which basically puts a delay in between each sweep. So this is my option to give that delay in seconds. So two second delay, let's say. And then the second prompt is how many times do I want it to sweep? Okay, now with windshield wipers, you actually have a switch that you can turn on and off. For us, we're gonna hard code. So let's say I want five sweeps. Can I put that in? And we're going to see I'm sweeping and then I'm waiting. One, two, and I'm sweeping. And it's going to do this five times. So we're adding some functionality in. We're going to have to play with our method headers. Our sweep method is now going to have to take a variable. It's going to have to take a delay variable. And it's going to have to have a loop of some kind to loop it number of sweeps time. So there's a definitely more conceptual coding stuff going on in order to make this work. 
Um, so this is a great little challenge for you at this point in the course. Uh, if it's too much, talk to your teacher if you have a classroom teacher, uh, and maybe they can help guide you in the right direction. Thanks for watching Lesson 11 in the Arduino Basics tutorial series. My name is Adam. Uh, I'm excited to come back here in Lesson 12 as we work towards finishing up this course. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing and you're interested in what might come next. Have a great day.